I've worked with Arteza a handful of times, and most recently I asked if they could send me a couple of new things to try out, so I was really excited when I saw that Arteza actually now has a couple of sets of alcohol markers with brush nibs, so I picked out a few products that would work well with alcohol markers. The first item is the set of three white gel pens, which comes in three different sizes. There is 0.6mm, 0.8, and 1mm sizes in this set. And I personally have been using the same brand of white gel pens for a really, really long time. And they work, but honestly, they give me a lot of trouble unless the pen is like very, very new. So I was really looking forward to trying these and seeing how they work and maybe just like straight up switching over to these ones if they fit all my needs for a white gel pen. So very excited. And it's also super nice that they come in multiple sizes so you can get like variation of line weight when it comes to white gel pens because I don't really think I've seen any others that have sets like that. I also got a pad of Arteza's marker paper to work on. And this one specifically is a nine by 12 paper pad that comes with 50 sheets. I actually don't have a ton of experience working with marker paper, but I wanted to give it a shot and actually work on a paper that's intended for markers. And then last, but certainly not least, is this beautiful, beautiful set of 36 brush markers. I've gotten several sets of alcohol markers from Arteza in the past, all of which were bullet nib and chisel nibs, and I'm genuinely such a huge fan of the quality of the markers and like working with them as a whole. I cannot stress enough how much their markers really genuinely blew me away when I first tried them. Both their chisel nibs and their bullet nibs held up really well, the barrel was really comfortable to hold and everything about the quality of the ink and the marker just like really really impressed me. Alcohol markers used to be my favorite medium probably like five to six years ago I want to say. Maybe even longer than that but at the time I just stuck with buying Copic markers which are insanely expensive. So it's really nice to see Arteza dipping their toes into offering markers that come with a brush nib since they feel so sought after when it comes to alcohol markers. As far as their markers with brush nibs go, for the time being, they have this set, which is called Tropical Tones, as well as two smaller sets with 12 markers. Their bullet nib markers have a much bigger selection though, with the biggest set being 144 markers. So I'm really hoping they expand their selection of brush markers in the future, because it would be really cool if they offered larger sets. The set I got comes with 36 markers though, which can seem both like a lot of markers or a small amount of markers, depending on how you look at it. In my mind, I feel like 36 colors really isn't a huge selection of alcohol markers, just because you are pretty limited when it comes to blending colors together to make a different color. But once I swatched all of the colors on a sheet of paper, I was actually really impressed with how well-rounded this set of markers is. There's really evenly balanced selection of pretty much every color in the rainbow, which is so, so nice. And on top of that, they even managed to squeeze in a very nice selection of gray tone markers, as well as earthy tones that can work as skin tones. So for that reason, I think this is such a great set to pick up if you've wanted alcohol markers, because in terms of starting a collection of markers, really the only thing I can even think of that I personally would want to add to a set like this is colors that are either on the really dark and saturated end or colors that are very, very pastel. But like even with that in mind, this set has really dark colors and it has pastel colors, which is so insanely nice because they really give you such a good selection of colors that are blendable with each other. You can go from dark to light in the same hue. It's like, it's such a nice set. So like I said, this set just does a really good job of having that well-rounded selection of colors and easily sets you up to be able to color pretty much whatever you want, which makes this perfect for a beginner or if you're looking to like expand your marker collection at all. I was just really blown away at this because I remember when I saw it on the website, I was like, oh yeah, I really wanna try this set, but I wasn't too sure about the color selection. And then when I swatched it out, I was like, oh my God, this is an amazing color selection. So I was really, really excited to work with these markers just based off of color selection and the fact that I already have like such a good opinion on Arteza's alcohol markers from my past experiences with them. 
And then initially, I just wanted to do some like small, simple doodles just playing around with the markers on the swatch sheet that I had done. So I just decided to draw Kyo and Yuki from Fruits Basket because I have been trying desperately to catch up on Fruits Basket. I'm so behind, which is kind of surprising for me, but I was watching Fruits Basket at the time, so I just figured I would very quickly doodle the boys and I love these markers so much, which isn't really a surprise to me because like I said, the quality of their bullet nib markers blew me away and I love them so much. I genuinely reach for those so much more frequently than I reach for my Copic markers just because they're like, I don't know, they're wonderful. I love them so much and I don't feel guilty about using them because they're not $8 a marker. They're much more budget friendly and just accessible, I guess, versus Copic markers are kind of a nightmare to build a collection. <laughs> but I absolutely loved working with the brush nibs on these markers. They're so flexible. The markers also came super, super juicy, which you will have seen by now in just a little clip. Like just doing the swatches, there was ink, like splution, which isn't necessarily what you want. I would definitely recommend like if you get these markers and if yours were as juicy as mine were, where it was like some of them were dripping ink when I opened them. There's nothing wrong with that. I've done that with my Copic markers in refilling them. It literally just means they have a little bit too much ink in them. So it can't soak it up and it comes pouring out of the nib. If that happens to you, just do like a swatch sheet or use the markers a little bit before you work on any like quote professional piece, which I say very loosely, but like, I don't know, just like little sketchbook work that you're okay with flicking ink because that's what I did. And all of the markers were totally fine after I did even just like the little swatches. They were not like over juicy beyond that. Something I also wanted to mention about these markers that I love so much is the case that they come in. I have a set of markers from Arteza before. I think there are 36 sets that they sent me a long time ago. It's been a while since I got them. I'm pretty sure that those came in like plastic containers, which I just ended up throwing the plastic out and keeping the markers and putting them somewhere else just because like it's not the most supported like structure for housing markers. So I just figured I would put them in like a container. I have them in a really big pencil case right now and that works fine. And then they sent me, I think it's a 72 set and it came in a black carrying case, which is very convenient for travel for the sake of like, it comes with a shoulder strap if you wanna carry it like that. It comes with a handle if you wanna carry it by hand. Very convenient in that sense. But I really am not a huge fan of that carrying case just because it's really hard to slot the markers back in. It's kind of like a two-handed procedure. And I'm the kind of person that like, when I get a set like that, I like to keep them in the order that they came in versus like just mixing them up. Just because like when I'm referring to a swatch sheet, it's a lot easier to find the marker I'm looking for if it's in order. And it's also satisfying if it's in order. So that black carrying case for me was just, it was kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt. So when I got this case, which is amazing, it's like a really sturdy cardboard. It has individual slots for the markers. And on top of that, something that's super nice about this case is that the like, the bit on top that's horrible wording. But the bit on top, it folds over and it makes a stand for the markers that's like an elevated stand. And it's so, so convenient for desktop use. I love the stand so much. I hope they sell it individually in the future because I would really love to get some and house my other markers like this. It does take up a lot of space versus putting them in a pencil case, for example, but it's in a very nice sealed box that is sealed with magnets. So the markers aren't gonna go anywhere and it's very convenient for desktop use and it's very easy to transport because it seals really easy and it's just wonderful. I really like the marker case that these came in. <laughs> As far as the marker paper pad goes, I didn't have any problems with it at all. I used it for like one and a half sheets as of right now, and I really like the marker paper so far. Like I said, I'm not really used to working with marker paper because normally when I'm using alcohol markers, I use mixed media paper. So I have a, like a little bit of experience with marker paper, but not, not a lot at all, but I had no problems with it. The colors laid down really nicely and smooth. The paper is a really bright white color, which is so nice. That's 
like the tone I definitely prefer when it comes to any kind of paper. Just a nice bright, bright white. And I really liked using them. And then as far as the gel pens go, again, I did not have any problems with them. Uh, in my initial swatches, I was like slightly worried about them because they did the thing that some gel pens do where if you like go over a line, it picks up a lot of the ink and it's really hard to get like a thicker, layer of color on there which it's just a gel pen thing and it i was just a little bit worried about it because it was slightly streaky at first even in like one pass and then when i would do another pass it would kind of pick up the ink so i wasn't too sure how i would feel about them but when i was laying them on top of my actual drawings they worked totally fine like in fact i was really surprised with just how like dense of a color one pass with the white gel pen used because for my final drawing that I did I used the gel pens a lot and I was just laying them over solid color and I really didn't have to go over any lines and it was so nice that this set comes with very line width for these gel pens because you can use them in very line width and it looks nice because there's like very line width. <laughs> <laughs> but I was really happy with those gel pens. I'm definitely going to keep using them and see if they do the thing that my other gel pens do, which is after a while they just become a pain in the butt and you have to layer them. But so far so good and I feel like I used them a good amount in both of the pieces that I did. So I'm really hoping that they keep up with that because so far I really really like working with those gel pens. The final illustration I did though, I really did not have a huge plan of what I wanted to do in terms of like composition or color scheme or anything like that. So as per usual, I just winged it and it turned out really nice. The only thing that I'm not a fan of of this illustration is like, I felt like the white at the bottom, just like whatever piece of clothing she's wearing, the fabric on there, it was just really plain. So I went ahead and I did like dots and little floral pieces on the fabric and I feel like it, it's very not fitting in there. So I tried to tie it together by doing like the little flowers in her hair, something to, I guess, distract from it or just add to the rest of the piece. So I kind of wish I did not do those. I think it would have looked nicer, especially contrast wise when it comes to the black background of the piece, if it didn't have those at the bottom. But all things considered, by the time I finished this actual illustration, I made my piece with it and I'm okay with it now. But I actually really like how this turned out. Like I said, I used the white gel pen to do all like the flowers in her hair and I love how that looks. I think it's so freaking pretty. It's very cute. It is definitely not what I intended to do for this illustration, but I'm really happy with that how that turned out and this is actually going to be June's Patreon print so anyone who's pledged to my $10 tier throughout the month of June will get this print in the mail so if you're interested in that there's going to be a link in the description I never plug my Patreon but because we're here and this piece will be the print for the month there it is there is my subtle plug I'll also, of course, leave links in the description box to all of the products that Arteza sent me. There will also be a discount code down below. It should be a 10% off discount code that you can use on Arteza's website in case you're interested in picking up anything, as well as a link to Arteza's YouTube channel because they themselves have a YouTube channel in case you're interested in the actual like use of a lot of their other products or they have just like art stuff on there. So definitely check that guy out as well. Also, thank you guys for putting up with my very sporadic upload schedule as of recently. I have been dedicating a lot of my energy to my online store and that's definitely taken away from my focus on YouTube a little bit. I remember back in the olden days, I used to be on a very consistent schedule of one video per week and Looking at that now, balancing that with my day job, I'm just like, how did I do that? How did I manage that? But I definitely have more on my plate nowadays when it comes to Patreon and my online store. So it's just been kind of a balance. And especially recently, like the past, I wanna say like month or two, I've been very focused on my online store because of the update I did recently, just in terms of like making new products, both art wise and actually printing them or whatever it may be. It's just taking a lot of my energy, but I really want to get on some kind of YouTube schedule in the future. We'll see how that goes though. In theory, I would like to be posting a video a week, but I think realistically, I want to try and post a video every other week and maybe on good weeks, I will have one a week. We'll see how that goes. So thank you guys for putting up with that little chaotic schedule. It has not been consistent at all. I've just been kind of putting out videos when I can squeeze one in. So I really appreciate all you guys' support despite the fact that I don't have any kind of schedule and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.